Oh. I know an easy trick on how to get 1-ups here, because usually people are jumping around trying to catch the 1-ups. The trick here yeah. is to just look where the shadows are, because they don't move. The, the pickups don't move and they get thrown out. So just stand on the shadow, uh. they will fall into you. <laughs> that, well, that, that's probably easier than... Yeah, I have so many lives right now, I have no problem beating this game. Now we're meeting some new enemies, actually. The Indians. Indians? They are a lot more dangerous than you think. The red ones shoot fire arrows. Hmm. And you saw an old person. Yeah. Sorry, owl person. That's, uh, I think a shaman. You, there is usually like a thief or a shaman around here who has a bag. If you shoot him, he'll drop it and you can open it up. It might have a power-up, or money, or a star. I think I already missed all of the stars in this level. If you do miss them here, you can get them in the second chunk. Shit. Oh god. Yeah, avoid the stage hazard, by the way. You got hit hard. They can also kill enemies, so that's a good thing. Like, I remember, do you know there was a Wild West Lego collection? No. I don't remember. There was. Oh, I bet it was pretty cool. It was. You had Indians, you had like the tents, you had a lot of shit. And it's something that pisses me off. It really, really pisses me off. I consider the Lego collections saw their like golden days back before 2007. Because at around that time, Bionicles, like the newer Bionicles got released, the newer Pirates got released, the newer Knights got released, and they were all so full of fantasy bullshit. They were so unrealistic, and so cheap, like, the, the models and the, the pieces you use for the characters and everything else, they're so cheap. Yeah, and I remember the Legos that, back in the days didn't break easily at all. And no, it's not just that, it's that they, they look cheap, like, one piece and you've already got half a house. Oh dear. And before you had, you had to see how to make things look Oh what yeah, you them I, I know what you mean now. I actually seen in one of the newer Lego commercials where you can build a, a yacht. Yeah. And the, but, the top and the of the yacht specific. is already one part. Like, what the hell, man? You just put the roof on top of it. <laughs> yeah, like the pieces are already made for those those sets. Kind of takes out no, uh, creativity know. out of the Legos. Yeah, and then there's like the um. Well, it's, it's what happens when the Americans take over the Legos. Now this part is very design. important because you can jump out of the elevators here on those cliffs to get power-ups. This is where you can also get the missing star if you need it. Just be careful, you can easily get killed here. Wait till you see the bag, then jump. Don't tell me it's one of those, you, you don't see the platform, you fall off the screen. Mm -hmm. If you don't see it, it doesn't oh, okay. exist. Yep. Old game logic. Now this is my favorite boss fight, because of how cool it is. It's not particularly difficult, but it's really cool. Chief Scalpin. <laughs> Be ready for Pow Pow. You know Pow Pow is a... juice? He said Pow Pow. name in Mexico? Okay. This Pow Pow is a fucking brand. It's fucking Holy kind shit, of juice. Nearly hit me there. That tastes horrible. Chief Scalpin is very interesting because every time he jumps, he throws daggers. They can home in on you, so you better hit them. Then he enters this frenzy mode. You cannot hit him in this mode, but he can hit you. Oh god, that's so bullshit. Not really. Not really, like he's having any luck. I really like this boss fight. If you don't have your guns maxed out, it's really hard too. And if you get too close, he'll actually slash your fucking head off. I don't know, he's getting very easy for me nowadays, but back in, back when I was a little kid, this was one of the hardest boss fights of all time. It was really <laughs> tough. I still remember him for that. It happens very often like, oh man, this game was so fucking hard and I play it again, yeah, everyone kisses your ass. It happens, you get so good that the game's just easy. You're like, oh man, I remember when this was like the hardest shit ever. Mm -hmm. 
It, it happens mainly with Castlevania games. It, do, it sure as hell doesn't happen with Gargoyles, for instance. The more you play, the harder it gets. Because the, the more you play, the more bugs you discover. It's a bit of a buggy game, but it's not bad. As I said, this game is pretty short. We're already on the last level. <laughs> so, what was I saying about the Legos? Right. They were cheap. Yeah, the, so yeah, the pieces are cheap, and then they also have this this new minifigure collection where they sell different kinds of minifigures. So you got the astronaut, the scientist, and they all come with their own pieces. So if you want an astronaut, you just pop in the fucking minifigures gadgets, and then you have the same fucking astronaut. Mm -hmm. Before, you had to be creative with it. So creativity is being taken out of Legos as years go by. And the old collections were the best, like the ones in 1996, holy shit. Oh, you those know what they knights... say, nothing lasts forever. Yeah, those Knights Kingdom collections, they had, they even had badass story and they had all these castles and fortresses. The world was amazing, you had the pirate ones. And then, uh, one of the most wonderful and probably the longest lived collections, uh, other than Bionicle, was, um... Ah, what's the fucking name? Uh, adventurers uh. and exp the yeah, adventurers, explorers, uh, and um, yeah, I think that was the name. Lego adventurers. Well, I never really bought any of the collections. I do have some Legos lying around, but it was never from a collection. Just random bits and pieces. Yeah, here you have like stores. Well, they're not stores. They're like flea markets. You could say. Free market. Yeah, and what it happens is you go there and you find different like stores oh, selling like it. random shit. They have like random Sir Richard Rose. He looks like a faggot, but do not be fooled. He is no pushover. <laughs> yeah, so these shops sell um random stuff like old like, all shit that never got sold in the stores, or shit that people no longer want. It's, and the thing is, most of it is in good quality, if you know how, where to look. And some of the stores are really clean, but in some cases they're like, 30 hobo houses, so... Well, it is you better steer market. clear of those. <laughs> yeah, so there's some good quality stuff you can find, and one t this one time, I found... Like, complete collections of Legos, specifically Harry Potter, oh. and I bought, and you can buy them for really cheap because people don't give a shit with, like how much they're supposed to to be, they, they just sell it to you, they want to get rid of it. So you buy them, and you're like, and, and you can even bargain, you know, you can, you can even do some, some, um, barter, b barter with it, barter, barter. <laughs> You can even say, you know, okay, I'm not gonna pay this, but how about this? This much? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna pay this much for it. It's okay. Well, you might be and... wondering, why the hell am I getting killed so much? After all, I'm so good, I killed Chief Scalpin without ever getting a hit. And if you ever played this before, you know that it is not really a pushover. I just made him look like that. Uh, these pastors are very good at their shots. They are deadly accurate and deadly fast. But enough about that. It's time yeah. for Sir Richard Rose. And... Oh god. Cheerio, chap. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, you, you, I would get a lot of Legos from there. This pastor starts off with a bit of a cheat of his, from his side. He drops a bit of dynamite at the doorstep. Now if you have your weapons maxed out, you can destroy the balcony and force him... Oh, never mind. Actually, this is how you do it. Yeah, yeah. he drops another dynamite. You force him back there and shoot the dynamite. It'll make the boss fight a lot shorter, since he has two phases. The first one is where he... Acts like a dumbass and actually has a steel plate on his stomach. Oh, that cheeky bastard. And now this is where it gets interesting, because I only have two lives left and he's deadly accurate. This is where it really gets interesting, because you have to keep alternating between the, the places. He can't stand in one place. He will eventually bullshit you out of there. 
That's interesting. Yeah, it's really an action-packed boss fight. I really like it because of that. He's... This actually feels like a movie. Like, I know it has nothing to do with a oh. Wild West movie, but... <laughs> yeah. You keep moving. At, like, it's act it's really action-packed, as you say. Yeah. You have to move a actually... lot. And you have to abuse the evasion tactics. If you're not careful like that. I should have jumped up straight. But I jumped diagonally, so he managed to hit me in the foot. And I better yeah, not die I'm now. Actually, I'm actually play this game Sunday. He's almost dead. You can dodge bullets if you slide and change altitudes like that. Oh, I did it. Oh boy. <laughs> and that's the end of Sir Richard Rose and Sunset Riders. One of the shortest Konami games I ever played. It should have been longer. It should have. The SNES version has 8 levels. And I think mm. more playable characters. We might have to look at you it. You might as well play it, yeah. Look at all that money. Ooh. Make, making the mad dosh. Yeah, this, look at them. Ah, of course, Sunset. <laughs> well, it is Sunset Riders. I think it's a problem. Yeah. But yeah, this was horribly short. I think Rambo 3 was a little longer than that. Indeed. Then again, it's only two parts long. <laughs> This game is actually it looks good. Yeah, it's it's we good. Should have, we should have played. You should have played this instead of fucking Splatterhouse. Yeah. That game's just horrible. Well, I knew it would be pretty shit, so I decided to go with it first. Take out the trash first and keep the goodies for later. Yeah. The end. And then game over. What the hell? What? Nah, don't be confused, <laughs> it always happens like that. Oh, fuck you, game. Second my ass. Okay, I need a three-letter abbreviation. Uh. Hmm. Uh, um... Walder doesn't fit. Nicolozzi will look weird. Victor doesn't work. Let's go with the most sensible solution. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Apparently I've been beaten by two thousand dollars by someone called Toy. <laughs> Toy. <laughs> so oh, now God. that we have a bit of time, last thoughts. Hmm? It's time for last thoughts. What's that? Last thoughts. Don't you know? It's what we do at the every end of the game. We take a little breather and say what we think of the game. Huh. It's what we did with Splatterhouse. The game looks nice. It's a nice game. Uh, but too short. Too short. I f it's too short, yeah. That game is the kind of game that's a masterpiece and should be longer. It's fun. It would benefit it from being a lot longer. Like, four extra levels would have been nice. Yeah. Then again, if you're gonna add more levels, we might as well bring all of the characters in, because there were a lot more characters in the arcade version. And I'm sad I didn't get to listen to the music, or sound for that matter. Uh, I'll link it to you. I know just the website. Well, when the video is uploaded, I'll be able to listen to it. So now that we've taken care of this one, next time we're gonna look at Battletoads and Double Dragon. Oh god. And so it begins. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not mad at all because it's actually much easier than the original. <laughs>